So, ever since I made my 500 sub special on Final Fantasy X and then later on did a video about Final Fantasy XV, I've kind of been on a bit of a Final Fantasy binge as of recently, with an urge to really dive more into the franchise. And just recently, I beat Final Fantasy I for the first ever time, and I wanted to make a video sharing my thoughts on it, something I also plan to do with two once I beat it. So, what did I think of the Final Fantasy that basically started it all? Did it age well? Was it any fun? Well, how about I quit yapping and get into it now, shall we? Starting this video with my very first bit of praise, I think this game looks rather nice. Now, my playthrough of Final Fantasy 1 was accomplished using the PSP remake version of the game, as I had heard that that was the best way to experience it next to the Pixel remaster. And I can easily see why, as everything in this version genuinely feels like a step up while also being incredibly faithful to the original. The character and enemy models are now blessed with far more detail, making them much more visually pleasing on the eyes, especially the bosses. I hope the designer behind them got a raise because they were cooking with these designs, bro. Of course, it wasn't just character models that got a makeover, as things like towns, dungeons, and the overworld itself all got upgrades as well. And while towns and the overworld look far better, the biggest glow up to this game obviously goes to the dungeons, as the amount of detail is just fantastic as a design to make it look better, but at the same time, they keep it incredibly faithful is without a doubt worthy of my praise. My favorite dungeon design is probably a tie between either the fire dungeon or the underwater dungeon. Both were tightly designed and never felt bullshit, and as I stated before, looked great. But of course, it wasn't just the graphics that were great about this title, as the gameplay was also quite fun as well. Now, the PSP remake keeps it as close to the original as it can, so I got to see firsthand all the things that became a staple of many Final Fantasy games, for years to come. Things like four party members, job classes being fundamental to party builds, big overworlds with secrets, turn-based combat, finding the four crystals of the element, all of that is here to see. But there were two aspects of the original that I want to talk about more than anything else. The first is how your party is handled. In comparison to later Final Fantasy games that either had characters with set jobs or utilized the job system, the original Final Fantasy gives you six jobs to choose from. Warrior, Monk, Thief, Red Mage, Black Mage, or White Mage and you use these to build your four-person team. What's cool about this setup is that you can choose as many of the same classes you want, so you can build your teams however you want, which in turn makes this game far more replayable due to the large amount of team building potential. You could go for building something much more balanced with this team in terms of party design by picking a mix of attackers and mages, or you can make a team more focused on physical attacks by choosing mostly attack classes, or you can just make a team of white mages instead. I don't know why you would, but hey, that's the fun of it, right? It's kind of sad most RPGs nowadays don't try something like this more. If there are, like, any of these that try these, can you put them down below? I'd genuinely love to take a look at them. And the other mechanic that caught my eye was how magic was implemented. In the original Final Fantasy, you couldn't learn every spell in the game, and could only learn three spells from the respective black or white magic store you go to. And while at first I didn't like that, I actually enjoyed it the further on the game went, as it added an element of genuine strategy to the game. Sure, I could pick that new fire spell, but that death spell looks mighty tempting as well. Or maybe you see that pretty little life spell and want to learn it. Although, there's that haste spell, which is so tempting. This also adds to Final Fantasy 1's replay factor as well, as you can now try any other spells you skipped over when you play through the game again. You may also notice that there are some spells you cannot learn. Well, that's because you're not skilled enough to use them. You have to go on a side quest to meet Bahamut, the King of Dragons, and be rewarded with a job change. This is easily my favorite moment in the entire game, as it feels like you and your team have truly evolved through going on this journey. The warrior becomes an honorable knight. Your mages become wizards capable of mastering the strongest magic. And your thief becomes a... ninja? Okay, I, I guess. It's an absolutely fantastic moment that makes you truly feel like you're ready for whatever comes your way. And that's pretty much it for gameplay. And last, but certainly not least, this soundtrack is great. I've always liked the soundtrack of the Final Fantasy titles I've played, and it was nice to see the origins of it all didn't disappoint in the slightest. From the battle themes, to the overworld song, to the lovely text scroll songs, each is a genuine bop, and definitely worth looking up on a playlist if you have the time. And thus, my list of pros wrap up here. So let's move on to the next part of this video, shall we? It is time to talk about the cons. 
So, for the cons part of this review, I do gotta admit, I was kinda torn on how to proceed with it, as criticism of a game that came out so long ago is not exactly my forte. Also, because gaming back then wasn't held to the standard it was now, so instead of just trying to pick apart everything, I'm just gonna focus on aspects of Final Fantasy 1 that I feel more were a result of its sort of dated game design. For one, finding your way to progress the story can be a massive pain in the ass. This is a result of Final Fantasy 1 being part of the map era of games, where games didn't have marked areas where to go, and you were meant to look around for yourself or consult the map it came with since these games hadn't exactly found a way to tell you where to go outside of a couple of vague hints. And as time went on, it started to get much better at this. However, for the NES era, we didn't really have that. So you kind of had to stumble your way around until you found the right dungeon to explore, or just got lucky and found the right item you needed. Which leads to another dated aspect of these games. And that's how you get certain items to progress. You know how in later games, key items to progress the story were either gained by completing areas or talking to an important NBC? Well, Final Fantasy 1 has that for kind of maybe one third of its items, and the rest are just meant for you to kind of find them in the world or dungeons. And if you skip over them by accident, or because you just didn't know it was there, you better like backtracking because you gotta backtrack through the entire dungeon to get it. I specifically remember the time I got stuck and googled what to do next, only to learn that because I didn't grab a certain item from a certain chest in the water dungeon and get the key item from there, I could not progress. So I had to go all the way back to the dungeon and run through the entire thing again just to get this one specific chest to get the item to continue the game. It sucked. And I'll be real, I am honestly glad they moved away from this kind of game design as time went on and chose to make those kinds of things rewards like special weapons and armor instead. That wasn't my only issue with the game. Another was its characters. Now this con is also due to the first Final Fantasy being a product of its time. As the characters you play as, well they don't have personalities. They don't have drives, they don't really have motivations or anything to really become, you know, characters. That doesn't become a major factor of these Final Fantasy games until 4 flesh them out. As a result, the party you have doesn't say or do anything, so you can't really get attached to them. Which, like I stated before, is a product of its time, as it was created, but it still kinda sucks I couldn't get, like, any of these guys as actual characters. And I just wasn't able to get attached to them. Honestly, that's the end of my con, so let's just move over to my final thoughts now. Final Fantasy 1 may have some design choices that are very much a product of its time, but I genuinely had a lot of fun with it, and I'm glad I finally played it in my big ol' binge. That's why my final rating for this game is a very solid 7 out of 10. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, do me a favor and like and sub down below for more RPG content, and leave a comment if you've played this or if you're just up for a chat. I'll see you guys next time for Final Fantasy 2s, where spoilers, I'm not gonna be as nice. Stay tuned!